loss of hope can bring despair, but God wants to bring hope and resurrection power into your life as He will day by day as you trust Him. The question I want to ask you is, did you ever ask for something and it didn't happen? Did you ask God particularly to sort something out and it wasn't sorted out? Did you pray really hard, day and night, didn't do any good? Today I want to speak on loss of hope. Well, I'm asking that you listen to this story. I'd like to read from the Gospel of, of John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 32, the resurrection of Lazarus, but focus on Mary and Martha's story. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. The sisters sent this message to Jesus, Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, this sickness will end not in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said, our friend Lazarus is resting, I'm going to wake him. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then she went and called Mary, saying in a low voice, the master is here and wants to see you. Mary went to Jesus and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This story speaks to me of a loss of hope, of being let down, of wishing, praying, hoping that something would happen and it didn't. And I'm sure that many of you watching would say to me, this is touching something in my heart because I believe God would fix this problem up. I let my son be given to him, surrendered it to him and look at the mess that has happened. My marriage was not doing well and I prayed and I prayed and it's not gotten any better. So many of us have so many deep hurts within us and, can I say, anger against God. This scene, if I want to explore it a little, is part of our human condition. There's Mary in prayer, then coming to Martha and saying, are you sure you sent the message to Jesus? It's now a few hours and Mary's and Martha saying, yes, I did. And Mary saying, but where is he? And Martha saying, I don't know. And Mary saying, but how long is he going to be? And Martha saying, now this is getting worse every minute. And Mary saying, send somebody else. And Martha saying, we already have. And the back and forth that can go on in our human heart when things aren't working out the way we wanted them to. And that applies to so many people at so many different levels. And as I explore this teaching, I want you in your deep heart to say, that's me. And where do I go with this now? I have pushed it down for so long, but now God has brought it up. Show me what to do with this. I would like to share now my story of wanting something so much, praying for it so much. You know, I was pregnant with my second baby and I was so excited what would this little baby look like? And I would imagine holding her. And I would imagine the clothes that I would buy to put on her. I remember doing the nursery up so beautifully and wondering what personality would she have? Would she be like my husband? Would she be like me? I prayed so hard. Never ever did I even begin to imagine or think that God would not answer my prayer. I want to share with you the, the horror that I felt. Yes, when my baby died, but I want to share with you the reaction that I had, which is, 
very powerful to this teaching today. When my baby died and they came and told me that she had died, there was a little gentle breeze about an hour later in the room. All the windows were closed, the door was closed, and I believe it was the soul of my little baby saying goodbye as she left. I cried and I wept and I wept and I cried. I didn't talk to God. Maybe you've stopped talking to God too. Maybe you know he's there, but you don't want to get too close to him because he didn't answer your prayer. I stopped talking to God. I used to talk to him before about my baby, about my other little girl, about our lives. I stopped talking and God needed to bring me to a place where he could begin to bring me back to a place of hope. I lost hope. Do you know what people used to say to me, and some of you that have lost children may have heard this, God needed an angel for his choir. Well, can I tell you, I hated God. I hated them for saying it. Because how could somebody take away something that was so precious and so wonderful that you could never ever get back again? I remember when I came home, I went into the nursery and my mother and my husband had stripped it bare. It was the evidence of a baby not with us. It was empty. There was nothing in that little room. There was a pain in my heart that I can't describe, but there was a pain in my spirit that affected me more deeply. And some of you have wounded spirits because you feel that God did not hear you, did not answer the prayer the way you wanted. And I had to learn what I teach and have been teaching now for many, many years. God never sends evil things, bad things, but he allows them, he permits them. And maybe your heart may be softening a little bit just as I say that, because he's not a harsh God. He's not a punishing God. He's not a God who wants to get at you and do something bad. If you can just open your heart a little bit right now and go, did God cry over my loss? I believe God cries over our losses. But I will share with you my recovery and I will share with you the amazing graces that I have received. But right now, if my story has touched into your story, keep your heart open so that God can reach in with his tender finger of love and begin a healing process of the wound within you. Here we have now Martha and Mary's story. We have Norma's story. And I pray that you have got in touch with your story. And so what do we do now with this loss of hope? As I say, I had stopped talking to God. I didn't acknowledge him really. I stopped going to mass. I was angry and I left church. And I ended up, as the world does sometimes, getting drawn into it to no satisfaction at all. And some of you who may have one foot in the church, one foot in there with God and one foot in the world, I hope that you learn very quickly that the world cannot meet the needs that are there within your heart. Only God can. There is a, a, a space within us that only God can fill. And there's a longing within us that only God can fulfill. And so there was I with one foot sort of still acknowledging that there was a God, but not really wanting to get too close to him, but a foot in the world. And then I had my conversion and I believe that we can have conversions at ever deeper levels. It's not just one conversion, but it's a deeper aha moment of, I want God more than that. I want God more than this. I want God more than. And so many conversions can happen within us at ever deeper levels. What do we do with this hole in our heart that's been left from the pain of being let down, disappointed, prayers not answered, some really serious things have happened in the lives of many people and I know many have shared with me. Do you know there was this beautiful young woman came to see me in my office and she said, I've decided to come back to God. And I said, what happened? And she said, my dad was seriously, seriously sick. He was dying. 
And I just knew God was going to heal him. I knew that if I prayed and if I believed, he would be healed. And I told my family and they kept telling me, just, just wake up to yourself. And she kept saying, no, I know that I know that I know this is going to happen. And she said, and it didn't. And he died. And I stopped going near God. But I believe the time has come to come back because I cannot live the life that I am living without him. And as we did a journey of, of gradual healing, spiritual development, she has come to a beautiful place now where God is her, her refuge, her source, her healer, her, her friend and her God. So I'm praying that will happen for you too. I want to share with you, you know, when I had my conversion back, I can remember I was in a house where we were living and in my imagination, I got a baseball bat and I smashed everything in that room, television and all. I was so angry, not just for this, this loss of my baby, though that was so huge, so major, but many things had happened in my journey. And this is what happened. There was, in my imagination, everything was smashed and suddenly Jesus was there. He was, had his hands like this. And I could see him in the, my imagination with my eyes closed. And he looked at the mess in the room, quietly took it all in. And he said something to me that was life changing. And I pray that it will be for you as well. And this is what he said, Norma, this is your life. Accept it and I will make it all right. And he's saying that to you right now. Bad things happen to good people, not sent by God, but are allowed and allowed for a purpose as I will share in a moment. But the next step on the journey is accept that this has happened and allow God to make it all right. There is a scripture that I, that I, that I love and it's Romans 5 verses 4 to 6. And this is what it says. Suffering brings patience. Patience brings perseverance, and perseverance brings hope. Suffering can bring hope. So therefore, out of the mess of my story, the mess of what happened to me, God has created a person who can hope and can have joy and can have peace and can have a good life. Many, many years after this, when I was reading Romans 8, 28, that God brings good out of all things for those who love and serve him. Once again, I was angry and I want to say to you, you know, God doesn't cut us off when we get angry at him. Jeremiah was angry, Job was angry. We're allowed to get angry at God and we're allowed to say, why did you let this happen? And then we allow the healing to happen and the peace of God to start moving within us and bring us to a place of acceptance, surrender, and hope. And so this particular day, when I thought of my baby, and I said to God, what good did you bring out of the loss of an innocent little baby? What good did you bring out of that? If Romans 8, 28 is true, then what good did you bring out of that? And deep within me, it wasn't really the words, but this deep understanding that when I had to deal with the horror of my childhood, the abused, tortured childhood that I had, I needed a human being to walk with me. And when the death of the baby was so horrendous and my husband hadn't been there to help me, something happened in him that he never left my side while I dealt with all these memories. In hospital, he says maybe 20 times he took me, I would collapse and as the memories came up and he would take me to hospital where I would be, they had to give me, if I needed it, an injection while I dealt with some of these memories. He never left my side. He would come to see me in the morning. He would, he worked many, many, many kilometers away. He'd come in his lunch hour and he'd come and see me at night time. I remember him bringing me red roses and you know, we were struggling. We couldn't afford things like that. And he said, I don't care. I just want to give you roses. And do you know what, deep in my heart, I accepted that that was the good that had to happen for me to survive and for me to help people. What Satan meant for my harm, God meant for the good of many people and likewise for you. If you can accept what has happened in your life, 
whatever loss or unanswered prayer or prayer that you felt God didn't pay any attention to, if you can accept it, I can promise you, not only will you have hope, but you will have within you a growing sense of peace and of joy. I would like to actually pray with you in a, in a very specific way now, because I'm sure that memories have come up within you. One of the tools that God has given me to help people is called the healing of memories. And it is allowing yourself to go back to that moment that we have perhaps stirred within you through this particular episode, to go back to that moment and to see Jesus in that moment to bring you healing. Let me just explain, if I can, how that worked. For this girl, perhaps, that came to see me, whose father had died and she had told everyone that he was going to be healed. I said, were you in the room when he died? She said, I was. I said, was your family in the room? She said, yes. I said, how did you feel? She said, I felt so let down by God. I said, I want you to go back into that place, in that room, and I want you to close your eyes and be in that moment and to imagine Jesus walking into that room. And she closed her eyes. And after a little while, she opened them and she said, Norma, do you know what I saw? Jesus was taking my dad's hand and his spirit was rising with Jesus. I saw Jesus taking my dad to be with him. I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're back in that, that moment of letdown where God just wasn't there, where, whatever it may be. Just be in that moment. And I want you to imagine now the risen Lord walking into that moment, that memory, and look up and see him. And look at him as he holds out his hands to you. And he says to you what he said to me. This is your life, accept it and I will make it all right. And he now puts his hands on your shoulders and he brings you to your feet and he looks you in your eye and he says, will you just trust me? And if you can say yes, I want to trust you, Jesus. Allow him to take you into his arms and just hold you. Lord, this person you are touching right now I believe the power of your healing grace is flooding this whole situation that has been tormenting them. And you are now reinstating yourself as the Lord of this life because they want you to. And I give you thanks that this person will have a good future and will have new beginnings and a wonderful relationship with you. Amen. I want to leave you with a strategy. Hope needs to kick your faith into action and say, you're a good God, you're a loving God, you have a good plan for me and a good plan for my family, a good plan for your church and a good plan for this world. Eventually we will all reign with him forever. God bless you and thank you for, for listening. I just hope and pray it will be a wonderful movement forward for you and I look forward to you tuning in to the next episode. God loves you. Problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.